Let me start this off with a hallelujah to Jesus, the sovereign ruler. This is not a rumor. Got the truth, so we about to screw you. Check out a style maneuver. Shout it to you like the loudest roof. Of Christ brought us up from out the sewer. We don't have to doubt the future. Crafting our verses as we bask in his worship. You asking the purpose, partly to snatch cash from the furnace. Through Jesus' extravagant service, immaculate purchase. He was smashing the serpent, and we only scratching the surface. The seed was conceived in the womb of a virgin. The sun emerges in the manger while the angels serenade him. It's the birth of the Savior. The great I am became a man, came as a lamb, and would be executed to execute the plan and substitute the sand. In the place of the wicked on the cross, he was lifted, but we considered him stricken and afflicted, just like the prophets predicted. He came at the proper moment to stop his opponent and lay down his life to offer atonement. He's the most magnificent, the total antithesis of insufficient, the blessed, the glorious, splendid, transcendent, difficult to comprehend, independent of space and time, but presently present, suspending the heavens with speech. From coast to coast, he speaks peace to wind and seas, got heavenly hosts easily posted on bended knees, controls the cosmos with the most authority, so he boasts in the most. Most exalted King Christ Supreme. He's the sovereign thriller, the awesome healer, the law fulfiller, the solemn killer, the fraud revealer. No God is realer, yeah. We can take any time in the scripture. What you get is a prominent picture. See his light shining right in the night, and his right in the might, and the diamond in the mixture. See his name at all the renown, though. When he came for the lost that he found, though. He was tamed, didn't floss all around, but remained for the manger, the cross, to the crown. Yo, Satan had a choke hold on him. Fight for the rope, but dope, and then. All to the eyes to the S to the E to the end. That's what we hoping in. Risen on his spell check. The risen king can rinse clean. The most rebellious. I was hell bound. Now I'm spell bound. Word is born. I'm a born servant to the word of life. Uh, call me a sellout. I was bought with a price. We gotta hope they won't fail us when we return to the dust. We will rise up just like the one who justified us. It's not wishful thinking when the truth's sinking. We are clinging to the promises of God bringing an everlasting kingdom. Nothing can compare to the worth of what we inherited. Nothing in heaven known earth can measure what Christ merited. The skies declare the affairs of his glorious care. The God who was there was aware of the lights in our prayer. His purposes are permanent and perfectly prepared. Portionate. Everything that orbits around his glory subordinate. He is the most excellent one, intrinsic, infinite son. Preeminent the name par excellence, prenom phenomenon. He's beyond phenomenon. You see the father of cosmology, the abba of astronomy. He's part of we a pottery. It's shocking Jesus died for me. The father he adopted me and constantly provides for me. Whether or not I got degrees, you gotta see his odyssey from sovereignty and lottery to poverty and robbery to resurrected bodily apocalyptic prophecy. He's stopping all the mockery and scholarly snobbery that don't Acknowledge him properly. You ought to be on bended knee before the preeminent. It's awfully arrogant to reject him to your detriment. Study the development from Old to New Testament. You'll find a theme that's prevalent from age to age. It's relevant. Crisis on his center stage. Forget religious sentiments. The center on man. For something less is what you're settling. He is the most excellent. Exercising benevolence and blessing a remnant with the benefits of his inheritance. Yeah. The sin of sinners that separated and segregated. That severed the relations between man and his maker. And placed Christ on his car. Costly cross and compensated his life, death, and resurrection emancipated and gave us freedom from it all, freedom from the effects of the fall, freedom from Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden and from the law. So the saints stand and applaud his grace and glorious cause with hands raised, praising his name, singing glory to God. <laughs> Hi everyone, happy Easter. I am so excited to be with you for Church at Home today. We have an awesome service for you. It was so good to see some of you on campus for worship today. I am so excited Easter is here. The special day we have set aside to celebrate Jesus rising from the grave. Jesus is alive. And our Bible stories today is going to walk us through the Palm Sunday story all the way through Jesus dying on the cross for our sins and rising again from the dead. But first, as always, we want to start with a time of worship. Worship is a time in our service set aside to focus in on God, to think about his goodness and even express our love to him in words and song and even movement and dance. And I really, really love this next song. It's a little bit slower than some of the songs that we have done, and it's not really one that you can dance to, but I like how the singer Chandler Moore walks through the gospel or good news story. From Jesus being born 
like we focus in on at Christmas time to Jesus dying on the cross and rising again like we celebrate right now on Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. Let us worship the Lord together.
I love that song. But now it's time for the first part of our Bible story. We're going to watch it in two parts today. We are beginning at what is called the triumphal entry. Jesus' whole ministry was spent teaching people, healing the sick, providing hope, and letting people know that God the Father has provided a final answer to all of our sins. Now we'll talk more about sin in our next segment, but here, Jesus is on his way to the big city of Jerusalem. Let's listen closely and watch our Bible story together. Stories of the Bible, the triumphal entry. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. Jesus and his disciples stopped in the town. You coming? And Jesus told two of his disciples to go on ahead of them. Eh, okay. He told them to go into a village and that they would see a young donkey that no one had ever ridden. Rock! He told them to untie it and bring it to him. If anyone asks, what are you doing? He told them to just say, the Lord needs it and we'll return it soon. Yeah, okay, go ahead. So the disciples did what Jesus said and brought him the donkey. A long time ago, before Jesus was even born, God had said that the Savior, the King of Israel, would come to Israel in this way. And now Jesus was doing just as God had said. The news that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem swept through the city. Many heard about all the amazing things he had done, so they cut palm branches and ran to see him. Huh? The Pharisees and religious rulers realized that there was nothing they could do, for everyone was going to see Jesus. Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem and the crowd spread their coats on the road ahead of him. His followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, 
praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. The Pharisees were upset. Hey, Jesus! And they told Jesus to stop the people from saying things like that. But Jesus said, if they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into tears. So the people kept on singing, blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered, asking, who is this? And the crowds replied, it's Jesus. And Jesus rode the donkey through the street of Jerusalem to the temple in a triumphal entry, just as God said he would many years before. As you saw in that first video, most of the people were excited about Jesus coming into the big city of Jerusalem. Many, many years before this, God sent special people called prophets that told people what things to look for to know when the Savior God promised was coming. The prophets also told the people things that the Savior would do so that people would know that Jesus is the real Savior. As we saw in that first video, the Pharisees, who were some of the religious leaders, did not believe that Jesus was the Savior. Now you know, the past few weeks, we have talked about how we are made in God's image. And one of the ways that we are like God is that we have the ability to make choices. And each of us can choose to make the choice to believe in Jesus, that He is the Savior. Now earlier, I mentioned sin, and I want to talk about it a little bit more. Remember, sin is when we say, do, or think things that is against what God says we should say, do, and think. And in God's Word, the Bible, it tells us that all people have sinned. That includes you and me. We all have done things that's against God's will and plan for our lives. And because of our sins, and because God is holy and God hates sin, by ourselves, we cannot have a good and right relationship with God. So God promised long ago that a Savior would come. And that Savior would take on the punishment for all the wrong things that we have done. That the Savior would die for our sins. And that is what Jesus did. So let us join in now for part two of our Bible story. The Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the Son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus come in, come in. and give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying, and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council, and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the Savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the Son of God. You say that I am. <laughs> And the council was furious, and they shouted that Jesus was guilty, and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate, and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seems okay to me. They found him to be innocent, so Pilate said, that he would punish Jesus and then release him. But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on, his clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own, 
and then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, If you really are the Son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, this man truly was the son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body and found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! Don't be afraid, said an angel. He is not here. He is risen. At this, the woman remembered that Jesus had told them that he would rise again on the third day and ran to go tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. Huh? hey -oh. ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. He taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life.
Our friend Greg and cameraman Dan are out exploring like they often do. I wonder what they are searching for today. Let's join them in this week's episode. Hey, I'm Greg, and this is History Hunters. I'm an amateur archaeologist, and every week my cameraman Dan and I go out and search for the past. Coins, fossils, hidden treasure, you name it. It's all history. And the beautiful thing about history is that we never run out of it. So, let the history hunt begin. Come on, Dan. Hey guys, and as you know, on one of our latest digs, I threw out my back. I've been in severe pain for a couple weeks, but the search must go on. Today, we're in hunt for an old bank safe that was buried long ago in the early 1900s. Now, we've been given a tip by a local online history hunter that's given us the location of the safe. Ah, now here's the only thing. Thinking about digging up that big safe is already making this back flare up. Now, I'm gonna make a call to a friend, though, who might have the right machine to get us to that safe. Now, you just gotta help me, Dan. Let's go find him. Ah, oh, Dan, the back's hurt. Let's go, let's go. Oh. Dan, it's incredible! The Dino Dig 3000! It's one of the newest machines on the market. And Rick, he helicoptered it in all the way from Barstow, California, and he brought it right here to the right location. This is where the bank safe is. We gotta get this thing to use, get it powered up, so we can start digging. So Dan, straddle up, get your protective eyewear on. We're starting to dig. Woo! All right, now we're in full effect right now. Whoa! All right, we're swinging it over now, Dan. <laughs> we're gonna start picking up some dirt. I think this is the one from the early 1900s that the bandits buried. Oh man, there's too much dirt on it now. We gotta get it cleaned up and back to base camp. But it's a little too heavy, so I think we're gonna have to call in the helicopter to get this thing out of here. We're calling Rick. Rick, we need to burn the sky now. We're flying this thing out of here. Got it. All right, the bird's in the sky. It's hovering right now. Whoa, whoa, here we go. Rick, connect to the stage! Yeah, the wind is too strong! But we gotta connect it! Woo! All right, thanks, Rick! Woo! So we successfully dropped this in from the helicopter. It's at base camp, and there's one thing left to do, Dan. We gotta open her up and see what's inside. I'm thinking maybe money or gold, but something really important. Let's check it out. Here we go. Three, two, one! Dan! Whoa! Easter eggs, Dan? Well, I mean, we didn't find any money, but I guess it's pretty cool. I mean, Easter's this weekend, so finding Easter eggs is pretty special. Now, we didn't strike it rich, but I think we still have a pretty cool story to tell. I mean, finding Easter eggs 
buried in a bank safe, buried in Texas? That doesn't happen every day. I mean, sometimes we get caught up pursuing material things. We miss the bigger picture. I mean, we miss out on making good memories like this. But the more dangerous thing that could happen is that we lose sight of God and we stop making him the priority. Easter might seem like any other holiday with fun games and Easter eggs and snacks, but it's really the most important day in history. Jesus died on the cross and he rose from the dead, freeing us from our sin. Now, that's huge. Easter is our chance to remember and celebrate the incredible gift of salvation. This amazing gift and this amazing story of Jesus is completely true. And God lets us choose to believe and celebrate that Jesus is alive and with him in heaven. So no matter how you choose to spend Easter today, make sure God is at the center of your celebration. It's the best way to spend the day. Okay, well, I hope you guys have a great Easter and I'll see you next week. We gotta get the Easter eggs back in here, Dan, come on. All right, that's not working, Dan. We gotta try a different method. Whoa, that was one of the coolest episodes ever. Greg on the Dino Dig 3000, moving the dirt, finding the real old bank safe with Easter eggs in it. I would not believe it until I saw it. And guys, you know what? That's sort of like Jesus. A lot of people don't believe in him because they don't see him. But we know something they don't. We know that Jesus is alive. He is with us today. He is with us right now. Jesus is alive. So let's tell the good news. Jesus is alive. I've been marked by your presence. This one thing I won't forget Oh, how mercy met dirty The day my life was spent And I've been healed by those nailed hands Through the lowest of nights I'm no longer a dead man Now I walk in the light So testify If God still provides Tell the truth If he's been good to you Raise a shout If he brought you out Everything with breath Sing praise How could we ever be silent? And there was never a moment when you left me alone. No. Remember, Easter is not the end. The mission continues as we swing into spring over the next few weeks. So please go out and register for the Swing Into Spring event. You can follow the link that was in Pastor's weekly update. You can go to the events tab on the app or on the website and register for the Swing Into Spring event. We will be doing live sessions with some of your favorite X Hour and children's worship teachers on hand to work with your kids. So it'll be live on Zoom, live <laughs> meeting with your kids, live crafts, live songs, live games. We'll be doing this for the next four weeks and we are so excited about it. So 
be sure to go out and register. Select the appropriate age range for your kids, um, and um, that way you can register, and then you can come by and pick up your kit. After you register, you can pick up your kit from the church office. We just ask that you please call ahead of time, let them know that you're coming in to pick it up. But those will be available Monday through Friday during the office hours, okay? We will not start using the things in the kit until the 18th, okay? Until April 18th, so you don't have to rush to get here uh, to have the kit before April 11th. Um, we won't use anything in the kit until the 18th, so you have two weeks to come by and get um, your kit from the church office. We will be so, so glad to see you there. If you have any questions about anything, do not hesitate to shoot me an email. I'll be glad to help point you in the right direction. Thanks, and I'll talk to you soon.